This is a podcast produced by Ashridge Business School. Many of the issues that we're facing now in this current, now official recession, are actually issues that have been hanging around for us in industries for some time. If you're in the pharmaceutical industry, you already have been aware of the challenges the pharmaceutical business model has got. And in this context, they get tougher. The car industry is the same, and a lot of industries. And I can imagine that for all of us, if we were really honest and sat down long enough and had strategic processes that really allowed us to um, really ask those silly questions that we've stopped asking since we became adults, we might actually just be able to notice that that business model is no longer sustainable. First of all, I think um, the conversations that we have about growth within our organizations need to be much, much wider than sometimes they actually, you know. Now, and I recognize many of you will have shareholders. Many of you will have you sort of reporting, which actually is on a very narrow basis and has to happen at a particular time. Many organizations have funding models that don't necessarily allow them to address. But my suggestion is that actually those should be part of the discussion and the debate and not necessarily always given, uh, a given. The second one is thinking about the wider implications for us as managers and leaders. I think one key aspect is connectedness. By necessity, we can't have networks of suppliers, customers, and so on, who all have strong relationships with us. That's the, the nature of business. But I think if we only pay attention to those strong links and not to the weak ties, um, then we miss an opportunity. Because sometimes those signals at the edge, that customer who you don't listen to or that particular perturbation is actually the, both the opportunity and the possibility as well as the threat. So when we think about intelligent growth and what it means, um, my challenge, I suppose, or my exhortation to ourselves, and I talk to ourselves as much as to anybody else, is how do we actually conceive of it? Um, do we conceive of it only in terms of some of the brute, measurable aspects? Or do we conceive of it about how our identity changes and continually develops in collaboration and co-adaptation with the environment and the wider system we're in? The progress framework that was developed back in 1996, uh, where I was not around, was very simple. Uh, and when I get over into my corner, you're most welcome to start asking more detailed questions. But it was basically a, a framework that was based on seven fronts uh, of climbing mountain sustainability, as Ray Anderson called it. And we had one front which was focused on the social aspects. Uh, we had one front which was focused on redesigning business models. And five fronts which basically helped us climb the areas where we could reduce our footprint on the environment. But I thought, I'd, since we're talking growth, I thought I'd focus a little bit on um, just some areas uh, of achievement. And the, the one that I like the most is the share price that went from two and a half to $20. Uh, but I'm afraid if you look on the uh, websites today on NASDAQ, we're down to three. Uh, but that actually doesn't mean anything, as you all know. Uh, we feel like we've got the business into a state uh, based on sustainability principles that we can survive the next uh, downturn. There's a whole body of knowledge of what you think you need to know for business, which you need to know for business to get in in the first place. You need to understand ops. I'm told you need to understand economics and statistics. 30 years later, I'm still not quite sure why you need to understand statistics, but that's only me. But once you're in the workplace, those issues are things that are kind of important, but you very quickly find yourself at a stage in your career where you're thinking about getting things done through other people, holding conversations, the psychology of organizations. And what we're really trying to do, and I think where business education is going, is to bring these issues collectively in the conversation. That a lot of the sustainability discussions are run by senior management, not necessarily by sustainability people, often not by management development. And how can you bring this into a strategic discussion? Our goal is to align management development with strategic um, challenges and directions of organizations. I think then the school and the management development departments are successful, but it's not always there, and that's the type of thing I'm interested in. So 
I've certainly got some, some points to think about today. I mean, applying the concepts, the philosophies of sustainability to a global banking institution is something quite new. That should be some interesting talking points in the office tomorrow and the coming days. This podcast was produced by Ashridge Business School.